As this flame burns, it recombines hydrogen and oxygen back into water again in reaction to the flame. That means here it becomes water again. For about four years now, I've heated my house with this gas. People often bring this argument up. Why use electricity to create gas and heat with the gas? Why don't you just heat directly with the electricity? And so I researched to prove to myself whether I was right or not. Official verification is up to universities, of course. I can only verify things for myself. And it is this practical experience which gives me the knowledge and assurance to explain what I am doing. Only then can I talk effectively about the things I have researched and proven and had hands-on experience with. So I heated electrically for two years, just to refute the argument of why not to heat electrically. And I can tell you, the electricity bill went through the roof. Heating with conventional electric heaters and oil radiators? No way! Last year, I tried infrared heating panels. They are also electrically powered and are said to be very efficient, which they were to an extent. But they definitely weren't as efficient as my oxy-hydrogen heater. So what does that mean? It is said that electricity is 100% efficient. Now what about my oxy-hydrogen heater? If I save more money with it, then it must be even more efficient. Saving money means this. I usually have heating costs of about 1200 euro each year. But after four years of trial, my annual costs are down to 450 euro every year. So this isn't just my imagination anymore. This is factual proof. But imagine this. I only heated one single room, and this is what I built. I call it the sand heater. Nobody has seen this before. I just have to connect the tube. This is a tube entirely filled with very fine sand. As it's a bit hot in the room already, so I won't keep it on long. First I have to ignite it from the top here. I've left the top open for you to see. Usually it is covered, so you wouldn't see anything. It is hot already. Now, if I hold a glass above this, you can see condensation. This is escaping water vapor. It is up here that the sand burns. It gets very hot and heats the entire tube up to 70 degrees Celsius. All that way up it is very hot. You can feel that. And now you can hear a low popping sound, which is the platinated sand. This is simply platinum foil within the sand. I just have to preheat it, and at 60 degrees, the platinum starts to recombine the hydrogen and oxygen without any flame. Now here we have the gas, all entirely flameless, just because of the platinum sand on top. It takes half an hour to heat the entire tube up, but when I switch it off, it stays hot for an hour longer. This winter I used it for 16 hours every day in a 20 square meter room, 10 to 16 hours with 240 watts input. With a conventional electric heater, I would need 550, 600 watts for this. 
Here it is just 200 to 300 watts. Of course, it depends on the actual weather temperature. At minus 10 degrees Celsius, perhaps I'll need 320 watts. And if it's plus 6 degrees, perhaps only 180 watts. That is the sum total of my heating expenses. Now for the second thing, I don't want water vapour to leak into the room. Well, I must say there is very little water vapour here. Nothing compared to dampness you would need a dehumidifier to remove. Just a very, very minimal humidity output. So here I have designed a cover. It is closed down here to collect the condensing water, which drains off through this hose. The cover is mounted with four screws so I can adjust the height. This gives me a heater size of one meter, with three square meters of emitting surface, and that is sufficient for one room. I still do this by hand. If you want to automate this, you'd have to install a heater coil instead of a Bunsen burner. Then at a push of a button, the coil would heat up the sand until it reached 60 degrees Celsius, and then the gas would start. And this is safe. Nothing can go wrong. Eine Heizspirale einbaut und dann drücke ich auf den Knopf, die Heizspirale fängt an zu glühen, der Sand wird 60 Grad oben und äh, das Gas kommt. Und es kann nichts passieren. Und da oben ist noch ein kleines Loch. And here you see a small hole on top, where if there was any unburnt gas, it could come out. Through entire winters this hasn't yet occurred. Kann es da oben raus? However, this escaping gas would be such a small amount that not even a hydrogen sensor would react. This gas even pours through concrete. It passes through everything. This is why storing this gas is very difficult, and why I don't like the idea of storing it. Because imagine a tank filled with thousands of litres of hydrogen and one spark. I wouldn't want to be anywhere close by then. Here the setup is different. I produce gas instantly, on demand. It is a constant circular flow. Now you may say, water is precious. But the water inside is not wasted at all. It stays within the circuit, and in the end, I have water again. So we have this natural product, water, that is disassociated, split apart, and then when it recombines and becomes water again, it produces heat. It is a constant circular flow where the water is reused again. The same amount of water that is split apart is what I get as vapour output, and I can collect this and refill the dry cell. I could automate this with pressure switches, temperature sensors, a thermostat and a small control system, but there's not much to control. As soon as it reached the right room temperature, then I'd let the heater run at 40 watts, and if the temperature dropped, it would power it up again to 200 to 300 watts. Und dann, wenn sie wieder sinkt, dann schaltet er wieder auf auf 200, 300 Watt. Es ist mir da auch nicht so wichtig, ob wir jetzt da. It is not so important to me to be super efficient here. What we have to remember here are that these things are just the very first beginnings. Ich habe vor zwei Jahren habe ich hat man mich eingeladen von der Uni Wien, von der Boku. Two years ago, I was invited to give a lecture at the University of Natural Resources and Life Sciences in Vienna, Austria. They were fascinated by my device. The only person who refused to enter the room was the professor himself. He was afraid something would explode. Later, they all wanted to take courses, so I built eight dry cells with them. Three months later, the professor retired, and his successor stopped the project. He wasn't interested in this topic at all. Und dann drei Monate später, was ist passiert? Der Professor ist in Ruhestand gegangen. Sie haben einen neuen Professor vor die Nase gesetzt bekommen, und der hat kein Interesse daran. Und ich sage einfach: In einer Zeit, wo wir 
But in these times of high tides and crazy climate changes, I can't understand why people still ignore things like this. Even with minimal trials, I have already gained decent efficiency. We're talking efficiency of 96 to 97% here. There are people in the US and Australia who have even utilized this with resonance method. In einem sogenannten Resonanzverfahren. They saved much more energy by using natural resonance and they made a lot of gas with almost no energy input at all. Fast keine Energie, viel Gas erzeugt haben. Und das ist ein, ein Mensch hat das entwickelt. Der ist One man even powered his car with it. Der lebt nicht mehr. He is dead now. Es ist einfach so, uh, die the global players do not want this. So all we can do is tinker on a small scale. What do you call this machinery? It's got a misleading name. It's called a dry cell. But as you can see, it's not dry at all. There is water inside. We have to distinguish it from earlier wet cells with two electrodes and a water bowl. Das sind die Elektroden einfach in einem Wasserbad angeordnet und uh, produzieren. Does this have anything to do with nuclear energy? No, nothing at all. I purchased a Geiger counter from NATO Times, still fully functional. It showed nothing, nada. Null, null. I then wanted to check for microwaves and got a microwave detector along with this Geiger counter. I tried it on my microwave oven and there was indeed a small leakage. I would say you can safely use a microwave oven for anything, just not for cooking, because it destroys its nature. Outside the oven there was no big emission, perhaps 0.4 watts below the oven. Then I tried it on my mobile phone and just called myself. And you know what the detector said about my mobile? More than 200 milliwatts. That is what we hold against our head dozens of times a day. We have become used to them and assume they won't do any harm. But that amount is really dangerous. But with the dry cell here, not even a hint of microwave emission. Zero. Über 200 Milliwatt. Also, da, da gibt's nicht einmal Mikrowellen. The water-powered car. What is that? It is the global players who are developing this, or who perhaps prefer not to. Almost every major company has something with hydrogen up their sleeve. As you know, the fuel cell is en vogue now. You power a fuel cell with hydrogen, which then produces electricity for the engine. This would be a great and efficient thing, but we would still have to refuel. There was this inventor, Stanley Meyer, who died mysteriously in 1987. He drove around in his water-powered beach buggy in public, and there have been several others like him. As I have said, this invention is 200 years old. Imagine that. Nothing has changed in over 200 years. Yes, everything has been spirited away, cleared out, made extinct. 200 Jahre, wir müssen uns vorstellen, 200 Jahre sind wir da stehen geblieben. Das hat man einfach, das ist einfach verschwindibus, ja. Meanwhile, NASA targets Mars. I recently met a young man who volunteered for this project, a NASA flight to Mars with no return. He told me he was shortlisted to being among 250 of 700 applicants. And we can be sure they will use this technology. And this is allowed in submarines and deep sea stations. But not openly. Not here now in this world, where we shall continue purchasing oil, gas and coal. That's the situation. So you're only using pure water as fuel? Yes, this is nothing other than pure water inside. That's way too cheap, isn't it? 
Yes, this is why they don't want to research ways of improving the efficiency of this system. If a lot of people join together to improve on this system, then they will find a way. Especially if they have an urgent need to do something for the climate, then they'll find an even quicker way, if they want to. But I get the feeling they're not interested at all. Not the people, but those who make big money from oil and gas. Here I have a catalytic converter. It works in the same way my sand heater does. What if I inhale this gas? Last year there was a 76-year-old man attending my lecture. He had already built himself this type of cell. He was ridden with arthritis, rheumatism, all that. He inhaled this oxyhydrogen gas every day. Oxygen and hydrogen. He lost his arthritis, his joint problems. He became fit as a fiddle. Here we have 30% pure oxygen. We don't have that much in the air. I preheat it, just like I did before. Now I turn off the flame. It makes a popping noise and I start the gas output again. Now, can you see that? It starts to glow. There is no flame at all. Do you see that? Now the flame has come back. For this catalytic converter, I would need a very specific air-gas mixture, but I can't produce this right here. Can you see this? With my sand heater, I measured temperatures of up to 750 degrees Celsius. That's quite useful already, right? I also tried heating with catalytic converters, but it's difficult to provide the perfect air mixture. I don't want to use the air mixtures right here as we would get small quantities of nitric oxides. But here, when I burn pure oxyhydrogen, there is no exhaust, just pure water vapor, nothing else. I think this is the only flame that burns underwater. I'm sure you've never seen this, a flame that burns underwater. Of course, as you know, it contains enough oxygen for standalone burning. Oxygen and hydrogen, that's all it needs for burning underwater. Now watch as I submerge the flame. Can you see this? The flame is underwater now. I pull it out again and submerge it again. The water is getting warm. For maximum heat distribution, the flame needs to touch solid matter. In this way, I have already reached 90% efficiency. Have a check. You can feel it is already warm, and I wasn't yet at full power here. Okay, now the power supply is running at full power. This makes a really long flame. It reaches up to... Oh, I get burned here. You can't see the flame anymore, but it stretches to perhaps here? Here I'm already burning myself. And this is really just a mini thing. It's not a very big thing at all, but a cell like this still produces double the amount required. So to heat a room, it only needs to run at half power. And with four cells like this, I could heat an entire house. Actually, I thought I could show you all of this outside. Because I can also inflate balloons with this gas. They will ascend to the sky. All of this is nothing other than water. Split apart in a balloon 
and up it goes. How many watts do you need for heating a house? That depends on its insulation. Initially, I thought I'd need a cubic metre of gas per hour, which is a lot. That's 17 litres per minute. But currently, I now think I can heat my house with 600 litres per hour. Over how long? To keep it warm, 10 litres per minute, that is 600 litres an hour. I need about 1.4 kilowatt hours of electricity energy per hour for this. That's not very much. When I compare this with heating electrically, then I would need much more. In winter, I heated three rooms with infrared panels consuming a total of 4,000 kilowatt hours of electricity. And naturally, when I heat with wood, then I need 18,000 kilowatt hours during the winter for my house, for six rooms, 120 square meters. But it's hard to imagine things when I talk about watts, kilowatt hours or power. So perhaps I can explain it in clearer terms. We know that one kilo of beech wood has 4.2 kilowatt hours of heat energy. Now I can heat a room with much less than that with my sand heater. This would be equivalent to 400 grams of beech wood over 24 hours. And I don't think anyone could heat an entire room that frugally using just 400 grams of beech wood and keeping the place warm for 24 hours. That's the efficiency I have. Und ich glaube kaum, dass jemand das schafft, selbst wenn er den ganzen Rauch, der es da gibt, wenn man ein Holz im Raum verbrennt, drinnen lässt, mit 400 Gramm Holz einen Raum 24 Stunden warm zu halten. Das ist etwa äh, die Relation. Nicht? One solid cubic meter of wood has 1500 kilowatt hours of energy. I need about 12 to 14 cubic meters per year. This is what any other wood burner would consume on average. And the point is that wood is four to five times cheaper than electricity. And naturally, I want to save electricity to save money. But it is more than just about affordability. I just love having an emission-free heater. That's why I work on it. Und darum darf ich nicht so viel Strom brauchen, damit das noch rentieren soll. Aber ich mache es ja gar nicht, weil es rentiert, sondern ich mache es, weil ich eine Heizung habe, komplett ohne Abgabe. Now, from producing electricity, you'll still get carbon dioxide, mostly from coal burning power plants? No, not me. I have photovoltaic panels, 3.5 kilowatts peak on the roof. That means I can make 4,000 kilowatt hours of electrical energy every year that I can, of course, freely use for heating, and I literally have zero emissions. Not totally this year, because I heated 75% electrically, but next year I will heat using oxyhydrogen only, and I'll have an estimated energy consumption of about 2,000 kilowatt hours for the entire winter season. This is laughable! This is 240 euro that I don't even have to pay because I have my solar power. Und das ist lächerlich, das sind 240 Euro, nicht? Die ich nicht einmal rechnen muss, weil ich ja Solarstrom habe. If it wasn't raining today, I could have shown you all of this better outside. I could have powered the entire setup with one solar panel only. I have one with 240 watts power output. That is half the output of this power supply. Sufficient. Everyone talks endlessly about efficiency, like a litany, like a mantra. Why? Und wenn man jetzt sagt, ja, es muss noch effizienter werden, warum reiten die Leute immer auf Let's assume I make one liter of gas with 133 to 140 watts. A second liter of gas I get entirely from solar power. 33 Watt. Sagen wir 140 Watt ist wurscht. Ein Liter Gas. 
Und den zweiten Liter fabriziere ich nur mit der Sonne, mit einer Solarpanel. That makes two liters for 140 watts, or one liter of oxyhydrogen for 70 watts. That would be over efficiency, over unity, just from the sun. The last little bit I need, I can additionally get from the sunlight and it's done. That's all I need. Das bisschen, was mir fehlt, erzeuge ich noch zusätzlich mit dem Sonnenlicht. Und es ist gemacht. Mehr brauche ich nicht. They teach us all in school that this gas is dangerous because it's combustible. Then an Australian comes and calls it Brown's gas. His name was Yell Brown. He didn't do much else than copy US patents from the 1960s and pass them off as his own. Brown. Jules Brown. Der hat aber wieder nichts anderes gemacht als Patente von einem Amerikaner, der in den 60er Jahren solche Dinge gemacht hat, abgekupfert und für seine eigenen ausgegeben. Und die If there were still any patents, they'd be long expired. That was 60 years ago. There is no use in trying to patent and hide this information anymore. Und es hat keinen Sinn, so etwas zu uh, versuchen, zu, irgendwas Neues zu machen, zu patentieren, um es dann zu verstecken. That won't make it public. It can only evolve if anyone can build it. Then it can be improved. Yes. Just as they said, only then can it be improved upon. This is called open source, where anyone can join in, replicate and develop free of charge. Now your head's are smoking, right? And what you may not realize is there are thousands all over Europe building cells like this. Thousands and thousands of people in Germany, Switzerland, Spain, Portugal, France. Well, the general public still isn't aware of this at all. When I first stumbled upon this design on the web, I was astonished. But it was not so easy for me back then. All I had was a photo of something homemade. I had to imagine what was inside it. I didn't know anything. I just gave it a go. And it worked. I made videos by myself, and then I got professional help from Andy. And we started spreading this and making it available for download on the web. Some quite big names all drove their cars with this. They all did. We never heard about them. The media usually ignores them. What? I hear one local newspaper might print a story. As I said before, I don't need mass media around me. I prefer small groups of DIY hobbyists. Kein Medium präsent sein. Ich habe das lieber, wenn wenn wir so in in kleinen Gruppen sind. Aber now I'll show you one more thing. Sterling engines. Here we are at model scale again. You just don't get any large scale, high power Sterling engines. Deshalb ein großer Sterling Motor, ein Leistung Sterling ist praktisch nicht zu kriegen. Even though this thing is so simple, any fitter could replicate it if they simply wanted to. Just a few moving parts, that's all. Da sind ein paar bewegliche Teile, die sich drehen und 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 das war's. Here I have a Sterling motor model. It was sinfully expensive. I think it was 98 euro. It's got no power output at all. It can't do anything useful, but at least it moves. It's a thermal engine. It converts heat into mechanical energy, which can then drive power turbines or electrical generators. All large-scale Stirling engines are usually heated with wood pellets. Uh, we'll also preheat this one. It's common knowledge that a Stirling engine starts when I heat it up with a flame. Wenn ich mit der Gasflamme hinkomme, das kennt man ja nicht, dass er dann läuft. Aber But what nobody seems to know is that it works just as well without any flame. Here we just have pure gas. Keine Flamme. Also ist jetzt nur das Gas. See, I can pass my hand in between and I won't burn myself. The cylinder is coated with something like platinum and palladium. 
etwas, also wie Platin, Palladium und so weiter. Can you see this? Now all the large manufacturers of Stirling Motors have been trying for years to build block heating power stations. Hersteller von Stirling Motors, es gibt viele, also einige, die versuchen seit Jahren Blockheizkraftwerke zu bauen. But heating with wood pellets soots up the engine. Their problem is the soot. Dann verrust der Kolben und das war das Problem. Here we have no carbon particles, no soot. No contaminants, clean, no flame at all. Null Ruß, nichts. Keine Flamme. The wire connecting the lamp has just come off, but you can see how the engine works. Man sieht, dass er läuft, ha? That's just about the limit, hm? The engine runs as long as I give it gas. As soon as I move the gas away, it stops. Can I make electrical energy with this? Yes, this Stirling engine produces electricity. Since I began working with hydrogen, I've observed how we've been mocked about everything from all sides, be it politicians, by everyone. It has been said that this flame could even remove radioactivity and perhaps transmute matter. This is calcium hydroxide, lime. If you store it for two years, you get nuggets like this. Normally this is a powder, now it is solid. Look what happens. This is called a limelight, incredibly bright. The funny thing is, the lime stays as it is. It does not burn at all. It gets a bit more crumbly, perhaps. The witz is, this kalk, der bleibt so wie er ist, der verbrennt nicht, da kann nichts mehr passieren, der ist einfach kalk. Now, I just heated up this lime three times in an hour for about 130 seconds each time. And the room temperature kept stable. I calculated this flame needs 300 watts. Now, how many watt hours do I need to heat a room with this lime? I just needed a fabulous 45 watt hours. So the limelight is even more efficient than the sand heater. But it would be rather complex. You would have to enclose the lime into a tube. Then we would have a flame here, which needs constant monitoring and control mechanisms. So theoretically speaking, it is possible to heat up a room with 45 watt hours. What is 45 watt hours? That is 0.45 kilowatt hours for 10 hours a day. That's nothing. I wanted to show you another thing too, but we don't have a magnet here. Place some carbon powder in here, just carbon. Heat it up in the flame two to three times. Let it cool down and then try with a magnet. What happens? It becomes fully magnetized. So this flame transmutes matter and other materials. Does the lime get magnetized? No, lime remains lime. Can you imagine this? A few atoms of carbon, one to two atoms of hydrogen, and we have iron and other materials. Und vielleicht noch ein, zwei Atome Wasserstoff und schon haben wir Eisen, nicht? Und andere Stoffe. I have to say that I like unanswered questions. I ask questions. People will find the answers. It's good for you to leave with more questions than you came with. Ich stelle Fragen und ich schaue, dass ihr mit mehr Fragen nach Hause geht, als ihr gekommen seid. Now let me ask you, is this information something we should discard? 
It's not interesting. There's no need for this. We have oil and gas and nuclear energy. Is the world really like this? As we all know, we have to reduce emissions. Every country is obliged to do so. There are conferences, climate certificates are traded. Now, if we could heat a house entirely emission-free, this would be a sensation, right? You forgot taxes. This is all just a business. With this, I don't even need a chimney. I could build a house without such a funnel. There are no emissions at all. All I get in the end is water. This also makes building houses less expensive without the need for a chimney. Common sense would call this a sensation. But it isn't. Perhaps it is even thought about. We don't know this for sure. We, don't, we do not fight. There is no need for that. We just do what we love and enjoy. We are just curious. We want knowledge. And if it might be forbidden one day, then so be it. I will rest assured and relax in my rocking chair or play piano and wait, because the knowledge is out. The water energy wave will come, no matter what. We just have to be patient. It will overrun all of us. Most of the people searching for free energy just think for themselves. What can I get receiving for myself? End of line. I started with a spiritual attitude. I considered what I could do to make this world a bit better. I did not want anything for myself, but for everyone. I invested a lot of money and all of my free time. But I don't have a technical background. A lot of you will do it much better than me. Perhaps I have practical skills, but I'm not a professional. The difference is that I began with the goal of wanting to give, to donate what I have, and this is a very seldomly done act. And suddenly something strange happened. Things simply fell to me, right out of nowhere. I always find answers on the web. I have ideas that turn out to be right. It feels like I get provided with. Somehow things are delivered, effortlessly. For me, this is the secret of amplitude of wealth. The more I give, the more I receive in return. People do not seem to know this today. They all believe in a constant lack of everything, feeling so poor. We should be feeling super rich. We are all indeed so rich. We are so richly gifted. And as soon as we start sharing these gifts, then we will receive them back in multitude. This has been my personal experience since I began taking part in this. And I believe this is why I have succeeded so quickly. And it's not that I know better than anyone else, not at all. It's simply of another nature. And we should all become more aware of this. Now we have been sitting here for long enough. It's time for action. We have to work all day to get our cells done.